Hello Savage Rifters, welcome back to the channel, it's Rob, and this week I am taking a look at the uh, Rift Savage Worlds Book 4, Arcana and Mysticism. She's weighing in at, uh, I think, 192 pages, yep. And like all of these beautiful Rift books, I am going through and doing a flip through slash review, just kind of letting you know what's in them. I'm not going to read the book, obviously, but I'm going to hit the highlights and let you know what's there. So you can decide if it's something that you want to pick up for your game group, or maybe you're just yourself. Um, if you have any questions about uh, topics that I hit in this video, about what's in the book that I didn't go into a lot of detail on, you can feel free to ask me in the comments and I will happily answer anything that I can. And just to get it out of the way ahead of time, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, hit the notification button so that you know when I put videos up. And uh, let's jump right into it. So, Arcana and Mysticism. Beautiful cover, hardbound book, and like the rest of them, that nice art spread in the beginning. That's just really cool, man. Love that. So these uh, books four, five, and six, specifically, like I've talked about in other videos, uh, take multiple world books from Rifts and break them down into bite-sized chunks. And they give you enough that you could run Savage Rifts uh, with just this book. But if you want more information on these areas, it also lists the books in here from Rifts from Palladium that this information was pulled from, so you can easily go find those books and you know check them out for yourself, which I highly recommend because those books are really good. So the books that went into making this one are Rifts 12, Scyscape, Rifts 14, New West, Rifts 15, Spirit West, Rifts 16, Federation of Magic Revised, Rifts 20, Canadia, Canadia, Canada, wow, Canadia, I ain't had enough coffee this morning apparently, uh, Riff's Book of Magic and Riff's Aftermath. So we are going to go into chapter one. You are hit first with Iconic Frameworks and the first one right out the gate is uh, an amazingly cool one called the Dragon Juicer. And yes, it's just as badass as you might think it is. And there's the artwork, which is also amazingly cool. All right, so the Dragon Juicer. Then we have the Elemental Fusionist. Think an avatar from the, what is it? The, 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 the avatars, last airbender stuff. All right, uh, then we have a Nega Psychic kind of an anti-psychic. We have a zapper. Zappers are like the electrical cousin to the burster using electricity. Uh, then Mars characters, you have the battle ma uh, magus, the combat mage, high magus, lord magus, the psi druid, the psi slinger, the psi warrior, the shaman, and the spirit warrior. And then our next section is DBs and Mutants. You have the Cactus People, Dwarves, Elves, Orcs, and they are slightly different than the ones presented in the Savage Worlds core book. Uh, then you have my personal favorite out of here, the Psy Ghost. Again, really cool artwork on the Psy Ghost. Uh, Vron War. Some of these I'm not sure I'm pronouncing them right. It's just, you know, how it looks. And then we go into edges. You have background edges. You have Magi of Dwamir, uh, a psychic of Psyscape. Combat edges, you have Arcane Marksman. Iconic edges, you have Elemental Attunement. Attunement. Life Sign Harmony and Warlock. Power edges, you have Dream Vision. Minor item creation, major item creation, psi weapon manipulation, and then we get to professional edges. You have the adept, the conjurer, the controller, the gray seer, the totem warrior, 
And weird edges, you only have one, and that is one with magic. Uh, then you have a small section on magic and psionics that talks about uh, this is the elegant alien form of arcane arts practiced by the Linsril, uh, especially their guardian sky knights and cloud weavers. And uh, it tells you in here how to use the Mars package from the main uh, Tomorrow Legion player's book and the, mirror, uh, the uh, edges you would take to make either one of those. Section on cloud magic and places of power. Chapter 2 opens up with gear. Uh, the Atomina, Atome, uh, Colossus, Fire Demon, Ice Drake, Infiltrator. Uh, then we go into armor. You got a lot of Arsno armor here. Uh, Arsno Incursion EBA, uh, Exterminator EBA, Battle Armor, Dragon Skin Combat Armor, Enchanted Armor. Power armor, uh, you've got the Jackrabbit, the Raging Bull, and then it talks about Techno Wizard weapons, and then it, it doesn't have the chart right there, it just talks about how they are used and how you have to feed them with ISP or PPP, PPE, and um, then we have a section on vehicles. Sandstorm Hovercraft, Kamikaze Fighter, Iron Horse, Assault ATV. And then we have some fantastic charts. A couple of pages of them here that cover the Techno Wizard ranged weapons, Techno Wizard vehicle range weapons, and close combat weapons. And just running through them real quick range weapons you have the Spirit Bow, Disruptor, Firebolt Pistol, uh, Freeze Grenades. Force Cannon, Nova Rifle, uh, Shard Pistol, Shock Pistol, Starfire Pistol, and Storm Rifle. Vehicle Weapons, you only have one listed. It is the Starfire Pulse Cannon. Uh, close Combat Weapons, we have the Deathbringer Sword, Great Sword, Katana, Long Sword, Mage Staff, Paralysis Staff, the Psy Pike, Spear, or Spirit Spear, and Whip of Pain. And then we get into the Gazetteer section that talks a little bit about the Spirit West, a little blurb about the Magic Zone, beyond the Magic Zone. And then the Chapter 4 is the Game Master's Handbook, which just like in the Blood and Banes book is one page because it just gives you the mission profile table to use in conjunction with the Savage Foes book for creating missions and the uh, GM's book. And then chapter 5 goes into a lot more detail, starting with the Spirit West. Uh, people returned. Journey to the West, Geography, the Grand Canyon, Shifting Lands, Flora and Fauna, Arsno, Life in Arsno, Government, Military Forces. Then you have Places of Interest, the Arsno Hospital, Arsno Weapons and Manufacturing, or Weapons Manufacturing, I cannot talk this morning. The Merc Market, Victory Row. Uh, Arsno territory, um, at least a hundred miles around the city. You have the Arsno Power and Waterworks, Mage Brush, uh, Ramirez Ranch, Stony Ridge, Terrell Plantation. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we get into the Native American preserves. Uh, like what life is like on the preserves, and they have them broken down and then broken down even further into which tribes. I'm not going to go through every tribe, but you have Arctic tribes, subarctic tribes, Northern Plateau tribes, Great Basin tribes, Pacific Northwest tribes, California tribes, Southwest tribes, Plains tribes, Southeast tribes, Northeast tribes, and then we have places of interest. You have Blackwall, Fort Apache, Fort Comanche, Fort Dakota, uh, uh, the Turith Sol, Government, Cloud Castles of the Dakotas, how the Tomorrow Legion is in, in, involved with them. And then that section ends with a savage tale called Worm Food, which we will skip past because I don't want to give away any spoilers. Then we hit Chapter 6, The Magic Zone. Gives you some background on the mag Magic Zone, uh, Flora and Fauna, Lower Ohio River Valley, Indian Mound, Nexus, Devil's Gate, uh, Strange and Wondrous Fade Towns, 
And then it has a really cool Fade Town generator in here, uh, which has charts for the population, the economy, the fade cycle, and the fade effect on the next page, which I thought was really neat. Uh, then we have a section on Mage Star, Life in Mage Star, Government in Mage Star, the Mystic Triad, um, the Grey Seers, Society of Sa Sages, the Vanguard, Tomorrow Legion in the Magic Zone, and then a Savage Tale called Misled to Slaughter, which again, we will skip the, so that we don't give away any spoilers. Chapter 7 is the Federation of Magic. Some bastards. Uh, History of the Federation, the Kingdom of Dunskin, uh, the Government of the Kingdom of Dunskin, henceforth I'm just going to say the Kingdom, uh, the Plains, Forces of the Kingdom, the City of Brass, Nostratus, uh, Dragon's Blood, other notable locations in the Kingdom, you've got the Ruins of Fort Knox, and the Shadow Village, how the Tomorrow Legion is involved with the uh, Kingdom. Then we have Stormspire, Life in Stormspire, The Master of Stormspire, City of Dwim, Dwim this one I know I'm doing wrong, Ugh. City of Dwimir, Life in Dwimir, Society, Law and Order, Lords of Magic, uh, Plans of the Lords, Forces of Dwimir, The Brotherhood of Magi, the, you have the Brotherhood of Battle, the Brotherhood of Magic, the Brotherhood of Creation, to a mere military organization, factions into a mirror. You have the Cult of Light, Dragon Roost and Greater Dragon Savings and Loan. Mercenaries and Rogues. You have the Trimagus tri Magicians, Mystic Movers and Shakers, High Mages Will Travel, Budget Mercenaries, and Wildcatters LTD. Then you have some private organizations and personal groups, Techno Wizard Guilds, the Warlock League, fraternal groups like the Brotherhood of Walkers and the Mystical Sisterhood. And you have societies, Artesian Society, the Wanderer Society, Places of Interest, the Dwemir Institute, the Magic Mall, uh, you have Fred's Familiar Farm, Eddie's Engraving Etchings and Tattoo Parlor, Magic Fabric Studio, the Potion Palace, Shining Light Healing Center, the House of Diamonds. Uh, then you have information on the Techno Wizardry Complex, the Psy Enclave, and then how the Tomorrow Legion is in, involved with them. Then that section ends with another savage tale called Colossus Hunt, which we will skip for no spoilers. Chapter 8, one of my favorites, Psyscape and Soul Harvest. Psyscape was one of my one of my favorite books from refs i love that book uh the side ghost is just really cool founding departure and return life in Psyscape. uh rooted in two realms the synex government of Psyscape, the psychic academy places of interest you have the city gates halls of government psi warrior headquarters consulate uh city gardens the bazaar the city zoo and cloud city and then you have Cloud City. I wonder if Lando's there. Anyway, you have the Soul Harvest. Uh, you have Harvester of Souls, Minions of Zala, uh, then the Tomorrow Legion, and Psyscape. And no Savage Tale at the end of that one. Chapter 9, Beyond the Magic Zone. You have the Dark Woods, Flora and Fiona, uh, Fauna. Exiles of the Dark Woods. Hamlet of Clavicle, Tomorrow Legion in the Dark Woods, Encounters in the Dark Woods, and each one of these encounters also has a little table that goes along with it too. Then you have Laszlo, which probably could use like three books on its own. Uh, Life in Laszlo, The Tolkien Crisis, Free State of Laszlo, New Laszlo, The Tomorrow Legion in Laszlo, The Ruins of Tolkien, Tomorrow Legion and the Ruins of Tolkien, Encounters in Tolkien, the Splugorth Colonies, First Citadel, Splugorth Encounters with another chart, Splugorth Outpost, the Tomorrow Legion and the Splugorth. Uh, then you have a Savage Tale, Castles in the Sky, which we're going to move past. 
All right, chapter 10. Chapter 10 is uh, a chapter we're mostly going to skip because it is Souls of Darkness. It is a full plot point campaign, just like the plot point campaign that I went over in Blood and Banes. Uh, exact same setup. You basically have six adventures that are linked together to form a campaign. And then they have a campaign chart in here telling you where the adventures fall in line and where you can insert your own adventures to kind of make it flow more organically. But I'm not going to go into what's in the campaign because you know, I, I don't want to spoil anything and ruin stuff for any of the players. So... Let's get to the end. All right, chapter 11, Arcane Friends and Foes. Rogues Gallery, you have the True Federation, Blood Mist. Uh, Brock Redman. Uh, let's see. Crassius the Cunning. Sorry about the noise. My dogs are inside making a bunch of noise in the other room. Uh, messed off Denali. Uh, then we go into Soul Harvest. Uh, Zala. And I think I'm saying that right. And then you have a harvester, uh, then a chosen, a soulless zombie, and then stormspire. You have lore of storm stormspire, dragon bane, and then we get into mercenaries and specialists. You have the dragon juicer in here, Dwemir, Dwemir, Dwemir. Yeah, battle mage, battle magi, high magi, lore magi. Uh, Linsril, Sky Knight, and Magic Zone Mercenary. Then you have the Psy Warrior, Shaman, Spirit Warrior, and then we go into the Monsters and Creatures section. An Alu, a Bloodhawk, a Dark Behemoth, a Dark Hound, a Devil, a Devil Unicorn, a Fairy Folk Minor. Which I thought was kind of weird because they don't have Fairy Folk Major, but you know, whatever. Uh, a fiend, a forest warden, a ghoul, a glitter mount, a golem, a great canyon worm, a land ray, a leather wing, an ogre, a uh, panthera teron, a plum serpent, a psy goblin, a rasashka. I know I said that wrong, but that's okay. A Shadeling, a Shadow Beast, a Worm Wraith. And then we go into the index, and the book ends with that same fantastic artwork as it had in the beginning. Uh, just as pleased with this as I was Blood and Banes, and I expect to be just as pleased with the Empires of Humanity book. These are really well real, done, really, really well put together books. If you're coming into this not from a Rifts background and you you this gives you enough that you can run and play and still understand the, the meta story that's going on in the world of Rifts. And if you are from Rifts or used to be a Rifts player, it whets your appetite enough that you may want to go pick up some of those old Rifts books and read them. Uh, I still, like I said, I still get them from time to time whenever I can find them. Uh, I think the thing I was most excited in this was the Psyscape stuff, but outside of that, it still has a ton of really useful stuff in it, and like I said, I'm going to get them all, so it doesn't really matter when. But that is an overview of the stuff that is in the book, and if you have any questions about any of them, I'll be happy to, you know, you can put it in the comments, I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. Um... You know, it, it's it's well worth getting if you like the stuff in it. If you don't like this particular area of Rifts, then maybe you don't want to get it. Or maybe you just want to pick up the PDF, which I think the PDFs are about half price. Uh, if you order the books from Pinnacle, you get the PDFs with them. So, But anyway, that's all I've got on Arcana and Mysticism. I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, if you've got you know comments or questions... Feel free to put them down in the comments on the video, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Until next time, good gaming, and good luck.